Andre, a real pleasure to uh, meet you virtually. Yeah, same here. Andre, when I look at Diagnose, you know, it was kind of a one test company for diabetes, but you're in transition. So give me the backstory on Diagnose and then just briefly, where are you going with it? Well, Diagnose has been in AI for, for a long time and we've actually created multiple applications based on AI. And um, eventually we fell into what is a... Uh, called uh, the um, retina analysis uh, using AI. And we actually decided to uh, drop all the other applications we're doing and really specialize in this healthcare uh, phenomenon that uh, is the retina. Uh, so we've been spending the last eight years uh, building this application. Don't forget that three and a half years of that was COVID, uh, but we spent eight years building this application. We based, um, based it on 400,000 patients that we've done in 14 different countries. Uh, I want to make sure that uh, any nationality or culture was covered with this application. There are some sensitivity between, uh, you know, uh, different cultures. So we did all of that and uh, we were ready to go to market. Then we, we got hit with uh, COVID, but the market we were going for at the beginning was really government and hospitals uh, and clinics. And uh, when COVID hit, <clears throat> we lost that market. Well, everybody in healthcare lost uh, their markets. But during that uh, three and a half years, I I came across one of my friends who is an optometrist and we had long discussions. And he said that it would, this would be very uh, useful for them to, uh, to, to, to be, uh, uh, to be involved with this, okay? And so we built an, an interface for optometrists. And um, and today we have one test that was approved uh, by the government, but we will have six tests. Okay, let's talk about those tests a little bit, because I assume you're still using the computer-assisted retina analysis to do it for uh, retinopathy, yes. diabetic, obviously. Uh, hypertensive <laughs> retinopathy, I thought I saw in the press release, and then age-related macular degeneration as well. Is that where the four tests are going? These are the fir <clears throat> first four tests. So the first one will be a general retina disease test. This is for the uh, general public. This is addressable for the, uh, uh, the market for optometry. Uh, we will have uh, the one we had before, so diabetic retinopathy, hypertensive retinopathy also, and uh, and also AMD. So these are the four tests that we're actually going to apply for today for Health Canada and in the next two or three weeks for, with Health uh, US FDA. And then uh, a patient, for instance, would walk into his optometrist and say, um, here's the general test. I need to take the general test or the optometrist would suggest it. How much would that cost that patient? Well, <clears throat> actually, it would cost them about $10. Oh, so Some, very reasonably yeah. priced. And then the follow-on tests, are they more expensive? They're all $5 a piece, except for the OCT images that we will do later on this year. But they're not it's $5. So it, it's insignificant. Most optometrists will put it in the uh, standard fee for the test that they do for the patient. So uh, normally, it's around $100. So they have the choice, either they bring it up by $5, that's their cost, or $10, and they make a little bit more profit on it. Embedded in, and it's a much more, obviously, efficient way of doing it, but you still have to have a distribution network. Um, are you working with governments? Are you working with uh, Thomas Trist uh, Networks, for instance? But <clears throat> we've signed an agreement, a three-year agreement with Essilor Luxottica, who is the largest player in optometry. <clears throat> they... Um, they have around approximately 300,000 sites uh, that are all optometry. So uh, by signing a deal with them, I gave them an exclusivity for that specific market. Okay. So uh, the addressable market with Essilor is about 300,000 uh, stores around the world. Uh, in Canada, there's 5,500 stores. In the U.S., there's 65,000 and, and so on and so forth. So they'll be addressing that market for us. And the reason why we did that is we, we can't hire a, a thousand salespeople. Doesn't make sense. And they have an established network. They have established relationships uh, that, you know, they've done over the last uh, 30 years. You can't beat that. The, the best thing is to do a deal with them. We kept the government business. So we have uh, contacts with the Quebec government, Ontario government, uh, other governments in other countries. So uh, 
we are, uh, I think we are well covered from a, a account management and sales perspective for the future. Okay, so we've got a product, we've got distribution. What other hurdles do you have? For instance, do you have to get approval of, from Health Canada, the FDA, <laughs> or others? Well, in, in a medical space, you know, it's good when you have those regulatory approvals. In our case, we have assisted AI. So the difference between assisted AI and autonomous AI. At the FDA level, they have autonomous AI, assisted AI, and analysis. So I decided strategically to go with assisted AI because most of the doctors, uh, they don't really trust AI yet. They're probably going to take another five years before they trust it. So we're actually going to get our regulatory approvals to make sure that the market the medical market understands that we are professionals. We believe in, in this market and being a, a medical platform, it's, it's very good to have these regulatory approvals. And the timeline on those approvals, will, will you be up and running and selling <clears throat> this product uh, by the end of the year? So the first step is to actually change the ISO certification we had before because we had an ISO certification for one test. Uh, also, in the ISO world, there's now new regulatory requirements for anything that's AI-related. So if you're AI-related, FDA, Health Canada, and, uh, and France, and all other countries, they've actually put new regulatory requirements for companies like us to follow. So, so we have to change our ISO. And also, uh, in ISO, that's where you have your intended use of your products and services, and where we're going from one to six. So we actually uh, design our new ISO uh, uh, requirements uh, to fit our six tests by the end of the year, except that we have our first uh, four tests going for uh, Health Canada approval right now, today, and we will actually apply for the US FDA in about 15, 20 days. Uh, and then we're going to apply for our last two tests, the OCT and glaucoma, uh, probably October, November of this year. The only reason why we're not uh, going faster with those two is we had enough with the first four tests. Uh, the OCT images um, uh, test is already in pre-production in about 20 sites. And uh, on the glaucoma side, uh, we have the, the code is all done. Everything is done. We just have to go in some sites now and get data live data of patients. It sounds like a very unique and special and useful product. Um, do you have any competitors? Yes, we have competitors worldwide. Uh, the Echelon report shows you that, uh, you know, we monitor four really key competitors, uh, but these competitors decided to go on the autonomous AI uh, route. And so, uh, uh, and that means that if you have an analysis, it comes out and you can't really modify it. So uh, we decided to go with the uh, assisted AI. Second thing, the pricing of our competitors is anywhere between twenty and forty dollars US. Uh, number two, number three, uh, on the autonomous AI side, uh, it is the test is related with a specific camera. So you have to change your cameras. You have to buy a brand new one, and uh, and you have to take the one you had and you know get rid of it. So it was not an approach that. Uh, most clients wanted to do it. Most optometrists have their cameras. Why, why would they change and buy a new one? It's ridiculous. In the assisted AI environment, you don't have to, to, to be uh, specifically attached to a, a, um, a camera. So we have an open platform with the assisted AI environment. Andre, great story. Thanks for sharing it. Thank you.